been away a little bit of time. Um, I want to talk about what's going on right now um, for a minute, and then I'll get back to my story. I just had to mention, because of the crazy times we're living in, um, you know, with the war in Ukraine and the gas prices going up, all prices going up, shortages in the stores, you know, we're in, um, we're entering into a very serious time. And after COVID, and COVID is still around, but, you know, it's much better now. But it could get worse again. And I just want to mention that um, people have changed. I've noticed it in um, some people. You know, I think over COVID, they've even said over COVID that, that you know, they've been really struggling. Uh, everybody has, to some extent, I'm sure. I think anxiety is very common in um, many, many people. And again, I hear some people talking about it, you know, um, admitting it and, you know, just got to talk about it. And uh, others that don't talk about it, you can even see it. Um, I was, I just flew to Vegas to be with family because of a uh, uh, loss in the family, Bob's um, brother, my uh, brother-in-law, um, and I reunited with some family that I hadn't seen, um, you know, from my married family, even though we were divorced. Um, I'm still calling them family. Um, they're still related to my kids, and obviously from this visit, I know that they, they still consider me family, which I was a little unsure of. I wasn't sure if they held a divorce against me because I hadn't been in close to any of them, but I was close to the one that died. Not close, but I did keep in touch with the one that died, um, but the others, um, I wasn't sure how they felt about me. But it was so good. It was a wonderful visit, and um, it, it was family. I know I'm always part of that family now, and that feels really good because, you know, if you've been seeing, I don't have a lot of family around um, on this earth. So uh, family is precious. Um, anyway, there was a lady on the plane. Oh, my goodness. I'll tell you about this. Um, it was a pretty long flight. Uh, to Las Vegas. So, I mean, four hours or more. So this one lady, young lady, I would say maybe 35, 40 years old, very, um, very attractive young lady, um, black lady, makes no difference. Just saying it if you're trying to picture it in your head. Um, so as soon as the plane started taking off, she grabbed my, my arm she said, I need to hold on to you, <laughs> poor thing. She, she was like having a panic attack. And I mean, it was really sad because she said she has to fly every th three days on her job. She had a really good job. She told me about her job, really good job. I'm sure she got very well paid, no doubt. But she has to fly every three days and she has panic attack every time. Must be horrible. And she was already taken a lot of Xanax. I have a very low prescription 2.5 Xanax, which I just carry with me. I never even take them anymore. Um, I carry them with me because if you heard my previous stories, you know, I did have, I had panic attacks when I was young and I did have um, some struggles with anxiety on and off in my life. So, and I had insomnia a lot, um, so I have this this very low Xanax prescription that I just carry with me in case of emergency, and I, I never use them. I just, you know, renew them when they expire, and um, anyway, I had it with me, and I, I, I offered to her because she was crying and, you know, really having a panic attack. I said, I have a, a Xanax, very low dosage if you want it want one maybe to help. She said, I've already taken 10 milligrams. <laughs> That's five times what I had, <laughs> you know. I mean, I didn't take it, but, you know, five times my prescription. It's like, wow, that's a lot. 
and she was still freaking out. But I, um, you know, of course I let her hold my hand. I put my arm around her. I said, I asked her if she had faith and she said, yes. I said, you believe in God? She said, yes. I said, you want me to pray with you? She said, oh, please, please. So I prayed with her and, um, she calmed down after a little while. Um, got a little nervous again towards landing, but, um, anyway, that's just showing, you know, people out there and this lady looked like she had it so together and I'm sure she does in all other ways. She has a, she had a great job. She's a beautiful woman. Um, you know, but people just don't know what all's going on inside of everybody. And right now, I really believe that, that everybody's having personal struggles. Um, if it's not financial and, you know, outward like that, it's inward. Everybody's going through it, um, you know, because of COVID and everything that's going on. And it might be that we're in the last days that Jesus is coming soon. I'm not saying that for sure. I don't believe anybody knows that for sure. But all the signs are right. The world is ripe according to the Bible. It's like everything is in place. Every single piece that needs to be in place is in place. Um, I saw uh, a thing on YouTube um, recently. I put it on my Facebook even. I shared it um, a short about 10 minutes um, from a, a Messianic Jewish um, post about the Shiva, I'm probably saying it wrong, um, some kind of Jewish um, holiday or something that happens every so often. And and they were saying, and they explained it like somehow with numbers and the, the Hebrew alphabet and all, because every, every letter has a number that goes with it and um, very interesting, all that stuff. But Anyway, they, they came up with that 2022 March, which is now of 2022, is beginning of the last seven years. And I think it's very possible just because of the way all the timing is, because I don't understand about how they figured that out. But um, I do know that we're, I do believe that it could be that we're, this is the beginning of the seven year last tribulation period. Um, and that means if you believe in the rapture, it could happen any moment. I hope it does. I don't want to be here during all the tribulation and all. I mean, it's bad enough now, but people are still having some fun. But if this is it, it's going to get a lot, lot, lot worse. And then this man of peace is going to show up and everybody's going to follow him and say, yeah, he has the answer. He's going to save the world and everybody's going to follow him. And I believe that half of the Christians are going to follow him. Half of the people that say they're Christians because they're not really. They just were born, you know, that way. And maybe they were, you know, baptized, confirmed, whatever. But if they don't have a personal relationship, if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, with God, with God, if it's not Jesus, I don't know. I mean, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and he's the only one that died and was resurrected and said that he died for you. Now, there's plenty of others out there that, you know, have all good things to say. And, um, you know, I can understand following them for that reason, for those reasons, but Jesus is the one that claimed to be God, and he's the one that claimed to die for us. Who else ever died for you? And he was resurrected. There was 500 witnesses, according to the, to the Bible. And if you know your Bible, which very few do, it's so sad. It's the most miraculous book out there because it's 6,000 years old and um, translated to every language and still surviving because of all the truth in it. And history is, is um, proving, history, archaeology is all proving, even science, lots of things are proving uh, true. So 
It's my guidebook, and I wish and hope that for you. Um, so now I go back to my story, I guess. I just want to say that word as far as Ukraine goes. My heart out to those people. Um, I wish we could just, you know, drop a bomb and put an end to it, but I don't know that that's the right answer. Just make things worse. We could all get blown up. Um, uh, so I don't know. I leave that up to the generals and to the president and to the NATO and all that. I just pray for the Ukraine people. I pray for the Russian people also. And I pray for an end. I pray for NATO and the other leaders, for all the leaders to make the right decisions. And I pray that things will get better, but I really have a gut feeling it's not gonna. I mean, the war in Ukraine might end, but like I was saying, everything is so right, just according to the Bible, that I think times are gonna keep getting worse, unfortunately. Um, but God said, Lean on me. Just think. All you have to do is think of him as your father. That's what he wants you to do. Think of God, the creator of the universe, as your father. And act like a little child when you talk to him. And he promised he will hear you. And he will protect you. He said, lean on me. Jesus said, um... He said, I am the living water. He said, come to me and you will never thirst again. So it's that simple. And all the details are in the Bible. Not all the details. They leave a lot up to um, mystery still. <laughs> but um, you can definitely gain faith through reading it. So, again, back to my story. Okay, I'm going to just... Um, do, it was hard for me to get back to this because I was with the other family that I just finished telling you about, my first husband's family. So I was just with them. So it was a little hard to switch gears and get back to my second family from my second marriage. But that's where I am. And I hope you catch up with previous episodes if you haven't already. Um, but I'm going to tell you a little bit more about uh, my job now. Um, I was working at IHG, Intercontinental Hotels Group. I, um, it's hard to keep everything in consecutive order, especially, it was, you know, it was easier as my kids were growing up, kind of, but now um, they're teenagers, and um, I'm just going to kind of lump things together into the first five years of that marriage, because um, it's too hard to try to do everything in order and all, so I'm going to do a little more generalization here. So I'm going to say that um, with my job, I started, as I mentioned before, as a, in a low-level accounts payable data entry mostly. And then I went into a specialized accounts payable. My my account was FedEx, and I all I did all day in and out was the FedEx account, um, which was huge. Uh, I only did that for a short time, thank God. And then I, I was um, promoted to um, the cash accounting uh, where I was posting cash receipts for the um, franchise hotels. Now, when I was in accounts payable, I was working with company-owned hotels, which was only 20% of the hotels owned. And then 80% were franchise, so I got, um, I became working for the franchise hotels and did that for about two years, um, the cash accounting, posting, and um, journal entries and all. And then I got promoted into billing and um, doing billing to the franchise hotels because the way it works is the corporate um, bills franchise for royalties. Um, the ho franchise hotels get to use the corporate name and logo um, they have to keep the standards, the corporate standards, and they have to pay corporate royalties for being part of the chain. 
and also um, there was travel agent commissions and the um, loyalty club, priority club, which, by the way, was the very first loyalty club ever, Holiday Inn Priority Club. Good point of trivia there. And um, so those kind of billings. Um, and once in a while when there was a special promotion, the hotels could opt in or not, and they would have to pay for that special promotion, right? So I do, did that kind of billing and um, journal entry corrections. And then um, after that, and also I was working from home um, part-time most of the time, some of the time, depending, we had a couple different managers. Some managers said, stay home four days a week. Some managers said, um, uh, you can only work at home two days a week. So depending on the manager, uh, that's how it was. And um, I made a, a best friend at work. Um, so only after I was there a little while, I met a, a girlfriend. Um, I'm going to name her. I don't. I really don't think she could ever. Um, I didn't ask her, but I don't see how she could care. But because um, she was one of my best friends ever, I love her so much, and um, so we got to working together. First, I didn't. She was just in the um, finance department, but then eventually we started actually working together. But we became friends about a year after I started over there. And um, I worked there a total of 17 years. So she and I became very close friends. And um, we ate lunch together every day. And um, that was all good. So anyway, then after I was in the, the cash department and the billing, then I got promoted again into... Um, uh, I was in accounts receivable, even billing was part of accounts receivable, but, and cash, they were all accounts receivable, but then I got promoted into, um, collections, which sounds horrible, but it was really good. Um, it was just collecting, uh, the royalties from the franchise hotels, what I was billing previously collecting that. So it wasn't like calling, you know, people who stayed in the hotels, nothing like that because uh, they have to pay anyway right away or they don't get to stay right anyway um so how i got into collections was i mean who who nobody wants to be in collections right but the the collections people were sitting near me in the office and i could hear them and i realized it wasn't as bad as i thought it would be you know hearing their conversations on the phone i thought i could do that and i knew they were making better money than me so after I was listening to them a little while, I applied for that position, and I got it, another raise and um, promotion, and um, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I got my own portfolio, so I was working with the same hotels all the time, same, um, I, were, I, I talked to the uh, GMs, the general managers all the time, usually, and um, it was all good. Um, up until there was a time when I was wanting to get, uh, actually it was, no, you know what it was? It was when I, when I applied for that job as collector. Um, I was at that time doing cash auditing. I had posted cash for about two years. And then they wanted me to audit the cash. Um, after a while, I don't remember exactly the everything, but I had I was the only one, and I was I was auditing the cash over. After I stopped doing it, okay, I don't remember exactly. Anyway, um, what happened was there was a new manager. She didn't seem. To, I just felt like she didn't like me. Uh, she did definitely have a favorite, a younger, the youngest one in the in the department was her favorite. And I really felt like she didn't like me. I usually got along with my managers fine, but this one I didn't feel like. And then when I, it was time for me to get promoted from the cash department, I remember what happened now. She gave me an assignment to audit the past year's cash. So I did that. I completed it. 
then I was looking forward to going into my new job. And she said that she that I couldn't go. She wasn't going to let me have my promotion and, and, be, and go into a new job. She said she wanted me to go back another year and do another cash audit for a whole another year, which would have taken, I don't know, weeks or months to complete. And I, I just like got, I was so upset when I was told that because I was so much looking forward into going into my new position. And um, I remember at lunchtime, I drove to the Walmart parking lot and I called my husband, Mark, and I was crying and I just told him, you know, my manager won't let me be promoted. She told me I have to do another whole year audit before she's going to let me move on. And, um, you know, I said, I just was crying. It's not fair. I, you know, and I, I just, she, I knew she, she just didn't like me and, and was just giving me a hard time and everything. And Mark was so good. You know, he was very business savvy and he told me, he calmed me down and he told me to, um, go back to go back after lunch. Cause I was thinking about quitting. I was, I said, I, just, I think I might just, I, I don't even want to go back. But he knew how much I, I really enjoyed my career and um, how I wanted this promotion. So he told me to go back and go to your the new hiring manager, the one who hired you into the new job. Go straight to him and tell him how you feel. Tell him everything you just told me. So I did that, and that was it. I never had to go back to cash. I went back. I, I was from that moment on, I was a collector and I was a collector for eight years. I tripled my starting salary and, um, a lot of perks, a lot of perks. So, um, I'm very thankful I got to work for them. Um, let me share two of the coolest things about working for IHG. Um, three actually, Okay, so one was um, that I got a lot of free tickets at, for the Olympics when they came because IHG was a, a Olympic sponsor. So we got free tickets and all my family was able to go to different events. And I also, um, I was part of the launch for Holiday Inn Express when it was brand new, which was pretty cool. Brand new um, hotel chain, right? Uh, if any of you remember, we had the coolest commercials out there. It was like a surgeon doing brain surgery who never went to school and said, but I, stay, I'm, I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express last night. You know, it was then the, the logo was Stay Smart. Um, and I was, I was, you know, on board with all that um, rollout. Uh, Holiday Inn Express was mine. 800 Holiday Inn Express hotels were my portfolio. That's who I took care of. Um, so I was proud of that. I enjoyed that. And, um, the other perk is that I have, um, lifetime employee rate, even though, um, they did lay off the whole finance department, uh, basically, uh, sent to India in 2009. They gave me a very nice um, $25,000 bonus to stay on to um, train the lady from India who was taking my job, and I did that, and um, I made friends with her. She came to my house. I brought her to church. Um, you know, it was, it was all good, um, kind of sad, but... Uh, you know, I had my run there, and um, my good best friend, she's still working there, and she's like way high up, uh, top level, worldwide, global um, position. Um, I'm so proud of her. I didn't name her either. That's okay. She knows who she is. <laughs> Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for watching and back to more of my uh, family story, my second marriage coming up. Um, God bless and um, 
you're having that anxiety and all, you know, hang on to Jesus. That's what helps me.